We're going to get into some vector properties now in the in R to the N. And recall that, you know, this N here, so R to the 2 just means we've got an X axis and a Y axis. And R to the 3 just means we're working in three dimensions with an X, a Y, and now a Z axis as well. And uh, really you can have R to the anything, so R to the 4, R to the 5, R to the 6. But it just becomes uh, very difficult to to graphically represent that. So typically in those higher dimensions, you just deal straight with the uh, the vectors, and you'll see the laws actually translate from R two to R three to R four to R five, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's still the same laws and uh, the same way you would mathematically go about solving the problems. But first, we need to do a, a little introduction to scalars. And so you've got your, your vector A, which goes over 1 on the x-axis and up 2 on the y-axis. So somewhere like this. And this vector is in standard position, which just means it uh, starts at the origin here. And so what happens now if you had... Uh, actually, no, to make this easier, we'll make... Vector A is just going to be 1, 1, so vector A will head out like this. Um, just ignore this vector for now, I'll actually erase it. Okay, so, so with the scalar, uh, all you're doing is multiplying 2 by your vector, so, you know, 2A, and we would write this as, you know, say, scalar C times a, and in this case, uh, the scalar c is 2, and so 2 a is going to be equal to, well, just 2 times 1, so 2, and 2 times 1 again, so 2. So when we multiply or scale our vector, and the scalar just comes from the Latin word for ladder, so it's almost like we're stepping up the ladder. Then, so 2a now will become this vector. So we've just extended the length, uh, we've doubled the length essentially. And what about 1 half a? Well, again, we're just going to do this exact same thing. So 1 half times 1 is 1 half, and half times 1 again is also 1 half. So that vector. It would be the same vector, but scaled back to this point. And what if we had a negative one half a? Well, uh, we would just multiply again negative one half by one, get negative one half. So negative one half and negative one half. It's pretty straightforward. So that vector would come back something like this. Okay, so now, uh, so just to get you used to R3 a little bit before we enter the properties. So say you wanted to graphically draw this. And remember that uh, another way you can write this in component form is 2 i hat. i hat denotes the unit vector in the direction of x. And plus negative 1. Um, for the y-axis we have j hat. And plus 2. For the z-axis, we have the unit vector k hat. <clears throat> so that's just another way you could represent it, or you could represent it like this. And they're all identical, just different ways to to represent the same vector, just to get used to the notation. But so we would do two on the x-axis, and then negative one on the y-axis, then two out on the z-axis. It's a little harder to draw, but you see it goes out this way so oh, there's one there's two so this vector from standard position from the origin come out like this so just to be clear you go out two x-axis negative one y-axis then forward or towards you two and the z-axis and that's your new vector there okay so now I want to get into some uh, some algebraic properties. This is this is the very important part. So 
U and V and W and we denote vectors, lowercase letters with uh, the arrow atop are going to be vectors and C and D will be scalars. So the first property is U plus V is the same as V plus U so it's uh, commu cumulative or com commutative and just means you can reverse direction uh, it's good either way they both are the exact same thing and so that's one so the second property now and it's very important to, uh, to learn these properties this will help you a lot as you go deeper into this so u plus v plus the vector w is the same as u plus v plus w and so we call this uh, associative and then third property is any vector plus the zero vector, so zero is an actual unique vector, uh, is just equal to that first vector. The fourth property, that one's pretty straightforward, you know, anything plus zero, you can think of it just like regular algebra. Then, so u plus negative u is equal to zero, so anything minus itself is zero. Again, still keeping it pretty simple. And then we have, so we have a scalar, C, times vector U plus vector V. Well, this, you just uh, distribute the scalar road. So it's going to be C, U plus C, V. And again, you know, just like regular algebra, distribute out the, uh, the scalar. And then we have... So we have two scalars now, so scalar C plus scalar D times vector U. Well, this is equal to scalar C times vector U plus scalar D times vector U. So, you know, again, you're just distributing this uh, multiplied by both of them. And we're almost done. So C times du, so scalar, scalar, vector, is the same as saying cd, so we just group the two scalars together, times vector u, and the last one, which is also very important, is that 1 times vector u, no, it's just equal to vector u. So these are just some properties, and uh, it's, it's important to get used to them because uh, this will really help you as you start doing algebra and going deeper into vectors. Okay, thank you. Have an excellent day.